Theorist theorizing case file 278 when good encounters go bad. <laughs> yeah, that's good when aliens attack. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, too. Or when With your host, attack. Tom Bergeron. <laughs> Did Tom Bergeron host when animals attack? I don't, I don't think know. so. It'd be pretty goofy if he did, I feel like. He'd, he'd, he'd be like, ha ha, there's another pit bull attack. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> um, alien street beefs. That's a good one, too. Um, Square up and settle it like men. Yeah, or aliens. You know. Or both. Well, it's, a, it's a funny thing because it's like, of all the encounters, you know, we all talk a big game, right? And, it's you know, you're like, they're not taking me. Um, but you don't hear of a lot of stories of people just being like, all right, welcome to Earth, and just throwing down with uh, extraterrestrials. No, you don't hear it. Not often. Not really like a often. lot of, it's disproportionate amount of sexy time. You're more likely to get a sexy experience than a fist fight, fisticuffs with aliens. Yeah, you're probably true. I think of, of those, yeah, I think of the one that we've done, probably only, you know, the, the one that's all I can think of is the one ATT Confidential we did. That was Star, their Stardust Ranch. Yeah, oh, Sam Wright guy. Yeah, it's, yeah. Stardust Ranch. He was he he had like a a fucking Hanzo Hattori blade or something. Yeah, just, yeah. And he was uh, and I did we not did we do a confidential on that or do we? Full, yeah, we did. That's game? what yeah. that's what I just said. Just oh, said did it. you say confidential? <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, go check that out. This guy basically just it was it, like that scene from Kill Bill. Yeah, it was crazy eighty eight except <laughs> the aliens, like yeah, nuts. just aliens. And I don't even think they were attacking him. They were just trying to be like, "Whoa, no, let us get him!" <laughs> whoa, dude, whoa, dude. Uh, <laughs> and he gets it. I like another one that I was thinking of where someone like actually was like, like fighting with them. It was like I was thinking of that guy early on we did in the UFO case file of the week where he he pulled out his like his gun in the oh, air. Oh, shoot it at the UFO. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shoot it. Well, no, there's Cisco Grove too. There's Cisco Grove too as well. Well, he didn't do shit though. He, he shot attacked. the one with the oh, fucking he Hawkeye. Arrow, he Hawkeye right. that dude. Fucking yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and he used, he used a, a projectile. Yeah. You got to get in true. close. Okay. You got to get and in close. We did just talk about Kelly Hopkinsville where they were shooting at these things and pinging them like old circus uh yeah. But well, what we want to get to, like we have really, a lot of shooting ones. We have a lot of shooting. We also like, talked about Phil Schneider one talking, time. Yeah, we're talking about extra, extraterrestrial fisticuffs. Remember Phil Schneider at Dol- Dolce Base? Dolce yes, Base. He got his hand. Yeah, built. but they got he like hand they laser. Was, got shot by lasers. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so ask me. No, we have, we never talk about when you get in close, up yeah. close. Yeah. yeah. Good old knockdown. No <laughs> knockdown. Fist, drag out fists and now, knives. That's what first, we're talking about. First off, first hypothetical. I wanted to run past you guys before we get into this. Before sure. we get into some of these cases, um, was for me. It, hypothetical for you guys how many leave the technology out of it how many little grays uh are you whooping until they get it <laughs> until until they until they get you into the ship they have no mind control or anything no, no nothing they they've decided they've come down this time this is an old ancient ancient ways uh, small gray where they're like no no we will take them the old fashioned way right no like tools that. no mm-hmm. technology so we're talking just this just the physique of a small gray like no muscles giant head everything we know about them, yeah, and then just three yeah. foot maybe four foot at the max like between eight and ten so it's like it'd be like fighting the seven-year-old yeah yeah between eight and ten something tells me that you could literally pull them in half you know what I mean? Like when you hear it, like, like I feel like a grown man, if uh, like you got abducted by little grays, I feel like you would, you could pull its arms off. Like we're t- I, I feel like you'd have flesh. to, you'd have to, you'd have to get the momentum going. But once they slowed you down, like if there were like six of them, like clinging onto your body and you're just like, you you know, preventing you from moving a lot. Like, I feel like then you'd be in a bit of trouble, but that's why I say seven. I don't like think grays have any, muscles like barely enough just enough no. to stand up well and but I don't they can pull you like they can pull you and so i feel like no, they yeah, use their mind they use their yeah, mind or some type of tech i don't think they like no maybe it's something like you know like monkeys are small but monkeys are strong you know what i mean oh, yeah. like five right, times maybe. more powerful pound for pound right. <laughs> so maybe it's like their their muscles they've shed like the yeah the, you ever, the, a lot oh, of the water you ever weight seen a spider monkey <laughs> those spider monkeys look like they look like you could just like pull their arms up but those things they are can strong. hammer toss a, ch- a, a gibbon, toddler across like a, the room like a fucking gibbon 
And they just walk up to you with those big, long, creepy arms and just be like, rip your head off. Eight to, Dan says 8 to 10. I think I could take out 20. Well, I think... I could get the... tired by, like... 11. <laughs> like just, well, it just, uh, I, I say it fully depends on the skeletal structure of these things. Because if they're, if like Zell said, they've, they've evolved and it's, it's not like, it's not like super efficient muscle tone. It's just like, yeah, maybe they're bodies. really dense. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like you could punch through them. Like if you hit one in the head, its whole head would be like, like collapse in. <laughs> Was you their bones I mean? like, are made of lead or something, and they weigh like, yeah, like they weigh like <laughs> two hundred yeah, pounds, and they're yeah, like, you just don't tons. know. They're so yeah, so dense. Their tendons are like is pretty much steel. You like they break your anything. hand, like trying to punch him in the head, just like. <laughs> well, I guess that goes to what if uh what if, all of a sudden you go to fight the gray, the little short gray. It's not. It's a uh, android of some type. Yeah, non non biological. You're talking just the NB pure, NBE pure, or whatever. pure robotic power. Yeah. Then we're toast. Well, Linda yeah, Moldenhaus says they're NBEs, says they're they're little robots. Non biological, yeah. Yeah, he's saying that they're little robots. Well, we always I say that it make it would make more sense that they're not like living flesh that, to travel through space or however they get. I mean, the thing is, like, you'd have to like completely incapacitate them to like take them out. I feel like if if they're little, ro- even if they're little robots, like you have to. And I feel like that would be tiring after like eight knock or nine. their power supply out. Well, I mean, if you got to like literally like stomp on their heads to like put them down, like it, I feel like you'd be tired by like eight or nine, <laughs> like just a little bit. Yeah, it's it, it's it would be it's an interesting thought because most of the time of the abductions, it's take like all of a sudden you see the light, you hear something and then all of a sudden you wake up missing time. Right. You don't find out what happened. They put like most of the time you're like the stories we hear there. You're like put into some sort of daze. Right. So it's it's interesting to and, and I would say this led to the fact that perhaps they've had violent run-ins with humans in the past because some <laughs> some humans would have a flight or fight mechanism, right? Where they're like you come down and they're like, "Oh, it's go time. Like I'm fighting for my life." Right? So, so it would be like any like biological creature. <laughs> you just be worried about it like freaking out or escaping or something like that. But, and that's exactly yeah. the cases we were looking for for tonight. Yeah, someone really instead of like running that. away or paralyzed in fear, got in close. Yeah. A couple of guys are going, "What's good? What's good?" Well, yeah, the the very first one that we're talking about, like a, it's known as the Patari ex, uh, incident, which happened in uh, 1954 uh, on November 29th. Uh, was this in in Venezuela? Early, uh, early in the morning. Uh, so. This ha- this case involved one Gustavo Gonzalez, a 25 year old Cuban businessman who was living in Venezuela at the time, and also his like his assistant, uh, Jose Ponce, uh, and they were in Gustavo's van apparently around like 2 a.m. and uh, 2 a.m. and they were driving to deliver some meat, uh, like uh, deliver some meat to the meat processing plant uh, near their near their thing. So. Um, this early in the morning, they were not expecting to see uh, the street that they were driving down uh, close to where their 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 destination was. They reported it being illuminated, like lit up like it was 12 noon uh, instead of 2 a.m. And they described uh, as they kind of like poked their heads out and like looked at what what seemed to be illuminating where the light, the light source was. Um, was it was like they described seeing this like metallic uh luminous sphere that seemed to be about two to four meters in diameter and then it was just hovering motionless above the street just like a little tiny sun uh hanging up on there um so apparently H- jose actually um stepped out of the car to get closer and kind of get a better look at what this uh, what this object was well mm. and as you would i mean i i, I think there's nothing reasonable but the sort of like i feel like any one of us would do the same. Zell looks like he's staring into that orb right now. Look how bright his, <laughs> his camera is. <laughs> so, um, so, like, you can kind of imagine, like, it, it was bright enough probably to kind of, like, you know, be partially blinding, I, I assume, because Jose, like, he didn't kind of realize until like it, there was probably like pretty good, like coming out. Like, you know, I imagine like in one of the, um, you know, the kind of close encounters of the third kinds where you kind of have the, like the entities like walking out, you kind of see the shadow cast, like as they move in front of the light kind of. <laughs> and he said that he saw this strange entity is this, this creature 
uh, approaching him and he ran he's like bolted back to the car as soon as he saw this thing because he could tell that this what's thing up oh fuck went, runs away this, like what is that like what is that light and then you kind of look down and you're like holy fuck what is that uh walking out in front of him now uh they described later uh, uh what this creature actually looked like and they said fucking ewok kind of yeah it's, it's something Kruger. <laughs> uh it seemed yeah. to be covered in what they what they assumed was like a like st- seemed to be stiff dark hair and it had these hands which they said had like what they could see were four long lethal looking dangerous looking claws um didn't seem to have a nose uh no mouth that they could identify but they had these two big <laughs> the, the old shiny... the old hair space suit <laughs> i mean i imagine i imagine the 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 monster from the bugs bunny cartoons i forget what his name is oh but the big yeah hairy monster but like yeah, a short yeah, little one. version yeah like a yeah. short little version um and he's only got again they've got no no real nose no real mouth but he's got these two large uh like dark cat eyes. eyes yeah cat all the kind of partially illuminated eyes. And, um and it didn't seem to be wearing any clothing because i mean why would you you're all covered in hair i guess but it did have uh what they just described as a some sort of weird loincloth um and it definitely wasn't wearing any shoes didn't seem like that as well so uh, Gustavo, who had been in the car, uh, also said that he saw the creature and then uh, it, it was outside of the vehicle and he decided uh, that he was going to grab this creature. <laughs> uh, he's, like, he's like, you know what? I'm going to grab. And I, I imagine during this, there's a conversation in that van where like Jose and Gustavo, and Gustavo. Are, he is like, he's like, How- I'm going to get it. I'm going to grab this. He's like, don't, don't get it. He's like, watch it. Come on. I'm going to get it. They're having that okay, conversation. Okay. They see it's three feet tall. He's like, it's like fighting a seven year old. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. This is like, yeah, this is like 100%. I'm sure, like, except in Spanish, like, they'd be having a conversation like we would uh, as ATT, like, if we ran into these creatures, just like trying to tell, so, you tell Braden them. not to grab it. Like, no, don't, don't do it. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm going to get it. No, I'm going to get that fucker. <laughs> yeah. I, do, I mean, I remember, like, this is the, I've had this same conversation just with, like, porcupines up north where you're like i'm gonna chase this little guy you're like don't do it it's a bad idea and like, i'm still gonna chase him and you chase a little porcupine for fun that's that's something i never chasing a porcupine for fun is not something i ever expected to really hear from anybody no. ever well you're not gonna grab a porcupine but like this thing well, I'm, I, I, can I don't know why i chase a porcupine in the first place they run funny that's... uh okay and uh yeah, they're cute. You just want to chase it. But like this this thing, it's like yeah. you come out of this. I could see the appeal of being like, there's some sort of glowing orb here. And there's this little kind of cute, maybe cute looking little thing. I'm like, well, if I think it came out of there, I'm 100%. Like if I, I could probably catch this thing and like, we're getting some money. Forget trucking. Forget the pork plant. Jose. <laughs> Toss them in the back of the meat truck. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're done with the pork game. We're going to be a traveling road show. <laughs> uh, so Gustavo oh, goes out and he wrapped, you know, he, he lunges at the creature, manages to wrap his arms around it and no tries ta- to drag it no back. No towel or nothing. Nothing. Just, going for it. Just, rah. <laughs> I just imagine Gustavo just like ripping his sleeves off and just being like, rah. <laughs> like it's just Zangief in it, like fucking uh, coming at this, this creature. It just wraps his arms around it and starts, manages to wrestle with it and then kind of get it start dragging it back towards the back of the truck where i guess he was gonna they were gonna throw it in and and you know whatever uh sell them sell it (laughs) display it i don't know take it somewhere um but uh gustavo reported that this creature was a lot stronger than he would have imagined for something of its stature like this tiny thing must is like 100 percent all muscle apparently and uh it managed to actually break free of his grasp and it kind of like he said it, it, it issued for, like a brutal hit to him. Like, I mean, it just like came down probably with that fucking just a monster Three button combo forearm, at least a tiny little forearm yeah. and just like, Wah! and then uh, put uh, both of them on the ground. I think, I think it, they were both kind of like struggling with the creature and it put both of them on the ground. Um, yeah. And it sent, I think it sent like, it sent Gonzalez flying a little bit. You did not like expect he, the strength of he the strike. Hit the, he hit the ground hard, like bounced a little, like did a roll. It was like, oh, 
Oh, yeah, we're, when in he, we're in danger. <laughs> when, when he lifted it up, like I think Gustavo uh, kind of uh, recalled later, like the creature seemed to like way like disproportionate amount that you would imagine like looking at it. He's like, it, weighed, it was much heavier than I thought it would be for something that size. <laughs> and it, it was... And the the shitty thing is, is like this is this story and this tale is obviously translated through a different language, and you know metric and imperial system. So it's really hard to nail down an exact weight because sometimes it's thirty five pounds, then it's thirty five kilos. Sometimes it's fifty pounds, fifty kilos, and I'm like, those are big variations of weight <laughs> for uh, something little. But yeah. this thing, like as he picks it up, it's. It's like a D, like a fucking DBZ move. Honestly, pick this thing up, and this thing just punches you in the chest. It Bang. stays in the air and sends you like eating it to the ground. I'm like, that's like a fucking just lands back on its feet, ready to. Yeah, this thing like a ninja, like ninja flip backwards, kind of, and then they desc- it made what they described as a feline jump uh, at Gonzalez, and Gonzalez was like. Uh uh-uh, uh, and pulled nope. out his fucking knife uh, that he had. I guess it was. It's not like it, they say it's a scout knife. So it, like I don't know if it's like an Come actual. On, he had a switchblade. Like, I don't yeah, know. He had a switchblade. Yeah, switch switch Come on. Yeah, get it out that dance? fast. To get it out that fast, <laughs> he already had, he already had it. <laughs> um, so didn't they so, yeah, say and, that um, they because their hands were like weapons? Like yeah, they well they said they already like they clocked like the the claws on the the end like the ends of their hands like they look like whether those are. <laughs> whether those were attached to fingers or they were like just that was just what their appendages were that just ended in claws um they already said that they had seen those so it's i had like you know these long claws at the very end that looked dangerous so i i just thought when when they had those claws and he struck them in the chest i thought like he was gonna get yeah. like, shredded now if you look at this chart here gonzalez <laughs> and jose on the fuck around find were you know probably getting close yeah. to 10 and they were in fact about to find out Yes, indeed. <laughs> they're on a perfect trajectory of finding out. Yeah, of finding out right uh, these these poor decision making skills. Let's get grand, <laughs> accurate grand. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Gonzalez like whipped out this knife uh, to try and stab this creature that was launching itself at oh, him. Oh, you um, know it was a butterfly knife too, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he's been waiting uh, for this. But as he tried to, you know, he tried to stab the creature, apparently, like, he aimed for the shoulder of the creature to stab it. And he said that the the knife just kind of slid. It didn't penetrate anything. It just kind of slid off. Um, and then he said he kind of described it as, like, it was something, like, you would expect with, like, he says, like, a rhino skin. But I'm like, is Gonzalez ever stabbed a rhino? Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, I've never how would you know what either. that is? But I feel, <laughs> like, you know I feel like? like the knife would go in. You know what I mean? Like, or maybe Gonzalez is the guy who's like, I tried to stab a rhino one time. And this is exactly what it felt like. But The only other like, thing is, I was like, man, this story could have taken a terrible turn. Like, I, I'd have to say he most likely was using some sort of fixed blade with a little bit of a hilt. Because if you went to stab something with, like, a flip-up knife. Oh, and yeah, your you, hand just... And, and you hit and that stopped and didn't go in with any kind of force your hand is just going to follow the the Zip. hilt onto the blade and just like all your fingers Woo! Ah! <laughs> uh yeah so it just it kind of uh like this thing like this, when this creature was still coming at him like still still you know managing to attack him he said that it actually had like these webbing between its hands like in addition to the claw, the four sharp claws uh that it was using to try and and grab him like it was trying to grapple with him like a flipper uh, hand like a yeah something like, yeah something like, like a that. frog like, like a like for almost like yeah, for or a like a bat maybe like maybe there's like skin web fingers between like that or something like that uh and then so uh, as, as he's struggling with this creature, you have Jose Ponce on like the other side of the vehicle on the right side. Yeah, not helping at all. <laughs> not helping. <laughs> um, this was the and, era of smartphones. He'd be filming right now. Oh yeah. He'd be the yeah, world star hip hop. Let's go. Yeah, world star. World star. <laughs> um, and so he's standing on the other side of the vehicle and he says that, that suddenly another small hairy extraterrestrial emerged from the right side and it was walking up this steep slope on the side of the road and it seemed to be having like dirt clods or or stone or like small stones or something like in its hands and it was not expecting to see him 
Like no. it came <laughs> up, it came up like holding some like souvenirs from Earth. Fucking doop do 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 up the hill. Hey guys, look what I got! <laughs> fucking freezes. Sees Jose standing there in Oshrock turns. Sees fucking Gustavo trying to shiv his buddy on the other side of the car. Full on brawl going on. This guy fucking just cat leaps three meters in the air, back flips. He looks like Baby Groot, or no, sorry, Baby Yoda, or uh, Grogu, whatever his Grogu. name is. <laughs> Grogu's flips. in back into the spaceship. Just Grogu's yeah, disappears just in the light. Into, well, yeah. See you later. And Jose's standing there like, holy shit. Thank God. And then just two come back out. Two are like, oh, it's go time. And one's got like a fucking Gandalf staff. <laughs> yeah um yeah so um they also noticed that the, the sphere that they have now like it more resembled like they realized it resembled more of a ship it had like it's what seemed to be like windows and like a hatch uh like for access and whatever and so yeah that that creature jumped in managed to access that that hatch go down inside of it and then like seconds later another entity whether it's the same one or another one came out and it was armed with what they described as a long shiny tube and it was like pointing at both of the men in like a threatening manner or seem yeah. to be now um, doesn't the, like that tube of light like he said the tube with the light on the end was it the zamfreda incident where one kind of had something like that like some um, sort of flashlight because i remember that, like the no, boy like that was the that was the 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 it was the russia one it was the one in russia Oh that yes, happened. that's right. Yes, um, where the orb came down in the city. Because this is this is like the ship and everything uh, is very similar. I was like, okay, there's some parallels here. Obviously, the creatures in the Russian ones would have uh, broken these guys in half. They were not little or cute. <laughs> yeah, the Russian ones were giant, but, giant one-eyed yeah. robots. Like this yeah. was like these little dudes are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but like the the craft, the description of the craft, and this weapon that they used like very similar uh so they said that once this this creature started brandishing this this object at them they said they suddenly felt like a, a vibration that seemed to encompass like both of their bodies and they were both him at jose and gustavo were both rendered paralyzed uh they couldn't move like from where they were standing and then as they were standing there the uh the creatures like got back into the craft and then just what they watched they all they could do was watch the sphere <laughs> rise up and then rise yeah, up they, into the air and like keep going until it just vanished out of sight yeah they just got uh, their ass beat they're looking at each other like what the fuck i just imagine like there's the one like sit like the one with the stick was like sitting in the in the car like or sitting in the ship and then the other one like flipped over there like holy fuck jerry's getting into it some of some <laughs> yeah. of these fucking earthlings man we need to he's like oh fuck jerry again that's, god damn it mother that's exactly what happened that's it 100 comes, up, dude, that's comes 100%. out with the fucking pipe he's like god he's like, damn oh, it fuck off <laughs> Get back! Get back! Jerry, get in the, get in the goddamn ship right the fuck now! <laughs> uh, tired of your shit! We just came in here to get some <laughs> dirt! And you came in here like... Yeah. Uh, so, like, Jose and Ponce... Uh, Jose, uh, like, apparently they were within running distance of the local, like, traffic office. So they, like, they they booked it. I get, he ran on foot. He didn't even bother getting it back in the fucking car. They just got <laughs> it. He just, like, hoofed it and ran. He, oh, and, but he also left, like, Gustavo there. Like, he did... Well, like, it, <laughs> Gustavo off, was, like a, was, like, a little fucked up. Like, he got, he got hurt. Like, he... he rocked. He got fucking absolutely rocked. And part of me, when we hear about some of his injuries later, when they got paralyzed, I wonder if there's a little missing time where these things just tuned him up. You know what I mean? Like he's some, running, some extra <laughs> shots. <laughs> right? I'll teach you. Uh, think you're so right. big and bad. Farted right, in their mouth, too, a couple with, times. With your smooth, with most of your primarily smooth and hairless skin. Think you're so big. <laughs> think you're so bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, and um, but yeah, like I well then I guess like Jose like just he would piece up a hanging meat. <laughs> um, I guess Jose just like left him there. Maybe he thought like you know go get medical attention or something, and uh, you know but got there. But Gustavo managed to make it to the traffic office as well. Like minutes later, uh, following Jose, uh, and both of the men like described their experience to the officers who were on duty at the time. Um, when it took them a like, while to calm down, like they were both shooken, like they needed water. Like they were like distraught. 
you know, they're yeah. like, what, what it, the guys? It, se- it seems like uh, it seems like the whole event lasted about like thirty minutes, uh, something like, or at least to get from there. Um, it could have been like you know, it could have been uh, seventeen, eighteen, or twenty minutes or something like that, yeah. to take them to run to the traffic office. I'm not sure how long it took, but they came in. Apparently, it was about like two, two or three blocks. Yeah, two or three. Right. Blocks so it's there. like so the the event apparently occurred at like two a.m. and then. 2 30 a.m. is when they entered into the police office where you know to, to tell the officers about their story their their experience cops what they had. first thought they look at these sweaty dudes running in like oh great <laughs> it's fucking 2 30 in the morning like <laughs> oh f- great like what have these bar, guys been the drinking bar, bars just closed and to you be just honest got kicked out <laughs> to be honest, my first thought listening to this i was like does that not sound like a drunk escapade like i'm gonna get oh, it oh yeah big time i'm gonna get it I can get the get drunk it. tank warmed up but the, right like how like that's 100 percent a drunk ex escapade so that was my first thought so when it's reported that the cops thought that right away i was like okay all right and, and they're like and no these guys are like straight shooters always on work like always to work on time at the the you know everyone vouched for them basically being like no these are guys are good guys they wouldn't they wouldn't bullshit this yeah. kind of thing. So uh, their their kind of excitable state, and then also kind of the details, like the the amount of details that they 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 described uh, from their experience, kind of convinced that the police that they had seen something, like something had happened uh, to these men. Uh, probably plus, you know, that on top of the indi- in injuries that uh, the Gustavo suffered uh, while they were you know struggling with these creatures is probably kind of you know sold them on being like okay well yeah these guys definitely saw something but um as, as far as i could tell like when the investigation as far as it went like they couldn't really find uh any evidence be they were how tall how industry. tall how tall like three feet yeah yeah there's here, here's Andrew, some here's some artist happened? descriptions of them yeah so i mean there's lots of a couple art like little uh yeah, little hairy dwarves. That's a, essentially, that's a yeah, that's an Ewok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one in the middle for sure. Like it's just now, like... <laughs> the one of the other things is is like there was actually like quite a bit of like reports of people like hearing um, various like loud explosions around that time, kind of reporting that. Um, one person down the road, just like a block or two away, reported hearing screaming like really like like fearful screaming and that night so it's like people have been like the screaming was most likely gonzalez and <laughs> and, uh, and jose but there is another report that i thought was interesting and there's a report that there was actually someone else on the road that night and this person was now it's it's tough and i'm gonna preface this with i'm sure there's stuff lost in translation but it's either like some sort of doctor or nurse in the area was driving the road after a shift and they had actually pulled up behind saw the light saw these men with these things and he (laughs) just turned didn't help them and he went right to the the police and he was reporting it he was like, hey, there's, there's some fucking crazy shit going down the road. And then not five minutes later, once he's reporting it, these two guys come flying in. The other thing is the, the, they go out to the scene. Obviously, there's nothing left behind, right? There's, there's no ship. There's no markings and stuff. But the truck's dead, right? Like the truck's dead. The ignition's flipped to the ons. Like it should be running and it's dead. Like it's just not running anymore. And they're like, okay, well, it's a little weird. Truck just died. Like, okay, that kind of lend some you know credibility to this is this the first fist fight with aliens is it i was 1954 so i mean the kid it's 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 gotta be right in the running then with 54 and and recorded like as far as as far as as far as modern ufo lore goes i would say this is probably the first this could po- very possibly be the very first fist fight with aliens yeah so like sober brayden is never grabbing one of those things without some sort of blanket or something <laughs> like it's just too dangerous like you need a towel or something drunk brayden different story that's why i like really <laughs> leaned into yeah but like gonzalez later like when he gets to the police station too like his whole like left side is like severely severely bruised 
like we're like, talking almost like, point, like the, almost like broken ribs yeah he had to go get checked out to make sure he didn't have he could barely breathe and it's like like that one of the descriptions i read was like you know that deep deep yellow bruise you get sometimes mm-hmm. where it's like so deep in and it's so tender his whole like left side your was bone, like that. your bone is right bruised. so whatever this thing when it hit him and he bounced off the concrete like that's kind of why the extensive bruising to his left side it just makes me think that you know i guess he took a pretty good hit from this thing it bounced off the road a couple times but when they froze him i want like i still in my head like this one that he was tussling <laughs> with just like went at him a little bit right like some just hammer fists Right or the other one came and beat him with the club a little bit, right? <laughs> and he doesn't shots. feel it. I didn't. I didn't start this, but I'll fucking finish it. <laughs> right, but then then you think he they leave and he he all of a sudden like comes unfrozen, but he doesn't really remember. All oh, he just feels the pain. He's like, oh, what the fuck, right? Um, I can't walk. I can't stand because that makes sense. Where Jose takes off and he's just like he he can't even move right away. He's probably winded. And hurt from what it like yeah. from this event, right? Well, just like yeah, probably bouncing off the asphalt. That that thing, like you know, if that thing whipped out of his arms, like they're talking, like it just like snapped out, you know, and then kind of shoved him down to the ground or whatever. Yeah, I'd probably yeah, probably... Dude, that's a powerful shove. Yeah, that's a scary thought that there's these three foot aliens that just like <laughs> just that powerful. The other just thing with it out, yeah. that made me think is it did because of the. Because of like the description of the ship and the weapon, it did. I did give me thoughts when I was thinking about it that like, okay, I've kind of heard this description of these two things before. Now I wonder if these are like, if they're you know, you know, you always hear in the circles and stuff that like, you know, at, at some point we'll ascend to like whatever the galactic federation or you know uh, whatever group of species are out there. Once we become advanced enough. And will ascend into their ranks. Part of me thought that maybe these these like weapons that they're using, these sticks and these ships are like Federation issue. You know what I mean? Like mm. doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, these are the standard issue ships and your standard issue don't kill the local weapons. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you can freeze them. And non-lethal, stuff. yeah, non-lethal yeah. weaponry or whatever. Right? Because like you you think like like let's be real. It's like the, they freeze the guy. It's like, and it's like, oh, I'm just gonna. It's like you can't kill him. Well, I'm not gonna kill him, but he's gonna wish oh, he was yeah. dead. <laughs> like, well, exactly. Because like I'm saying right now, the three of us, the three of us are on a road trip, and Zell has a gun, and we get out of the car and we get attacked by two dogs, wild dogs that just start fairly attacking us. Dan, you're collecting desert gravel and run back in the ship. Zell's coming out shooting. You know what I mean? Like he's shooting, <laughs> he's shooting the. So it would make sense that a like self defense at that point. Yeah, if they're <laughs> if there's some sort of galactic federation and they don't want, they're like, hey, we don't want. You know, you can't. It's not interference, people, right? Like, and in the case that you have a run in, use these non lethal options. Don't kill. <laughs> yeah, just freeze them and then run away. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, uh, you'd want something like that. Like. That just doesn't. I mean, it doesn't do. It's just non-lethal. It doesn't really mess with them. It just kind of like freezes them in place for a while, and then it doesn't do any like permanent damage. Uh, yeah, I would, I would assume like if you're an you know you're exploring. If you're explorers of some type, uh, then it's, yeah, that would, it seems like you're some scientist or explorer with a mandate, right? And you're like, you can't kill because like why wouldn't these this thing grabbed them? You think they would have just boom, boom, done, disintegrated, right? <laughs> That, that would have been my I, that's why i'm human right that's why we're never going to ascend to the glock because my stupid ape brain thinks like that <laughs> our, that's where our brains have stopped because uh, we're the pinnacle it's the best <laughs> that's all there is um, all there but yeah um while that might have been the first uh violent confrontation with the aliens it seems like it wasn't the last because uh we have a little bit of a more modern take on the uh <laughs> We're gonna On... fast fast forward a little bit to the next fist bite fist oh, bite, yeah. but before then, I'm gonna take a short break, grab a beer, and we're gonna be right back. Woo!
<laughs> We're back. We're back. Can we fight um, next? Yeah. So now, like, now we know it does happen. People get in tussles. I mean, listen, they do different species and stuff. Not everyone's going to get along, and sometimes there's right, maybe a little gonna... alcohol involved. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing we we talked about it before about being you know humans having this. Perhaps maybe it is uh, our innate sense uh, and our like proclivity for violence. Uh, it seems oh, yeah. to be. Um, you know, one of our one of our most dominant traits as as the human species, and you know, according to Russ Kellett, uh, fifty eight from Filey, North York's UK, um, it is something that is uh, highly desirable in the soldiery of the intergalactic war that we are apparently involved in. <clears throat> oh at some yeah, point. Russ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Russ. Um, so Russ Kellett is a he is a. Um, ufo self-titled ufo investigator uh at this point um i think he's also a, a retired uh healthcare worker uh and he he made claims like back in 2020 about uh being abducted over 60 times uh during his lifetime wow. uh, and during these abductions he was subjected to various training regimens and uh that and also a um some sort of injection or uh, of some type of serum which turned him into a super soldier uh <laughs> in order to fight for uh the aliens which had apparently abducted him i think the first time he said was well, when he was a teenager actually um these aliens that he described as um 15 foot tall uh alien men that re had a strong resemblance to dracula uh since they had very sharp teeth as what he uh he compared him to and these these creatures uh set him on the path to becoming a intergalactic super soldier where he fought in a number of battles on both on earth and in mm -hmm. outer space and other planets <laughs> now fighting the dragos the dragos yeah and russ russ claimed that uh they would they would make him deep throat some sort of tube and then they would make he would swallow some foreign substance uh and as long as he didn't spit it up he would turn into a super soldier uh yes uh, along with the, along with the super soldier no! serum um <laughs> no <laughs> He, descri <laughs> he describes his experience of being like strapped down into what he said, like was like a dentistry, uh, you know, a dentistry chair is what he describes. And um, like they, they perform this they procedure him on up. him of um, there's, he's, he said there's uh, in a couple of interviews, like he talks about like, there's some kind of injection mechanism, like on his back, like on the back of his neck was placed there along with the, the tube that was shoved down his throat. Yeah, this is, uh, now, <laughs> and now when I think of, uh, like super soldiers, right? There's Kurt of, Russell from the yeah, movie yeah. Soldier, yeah. right? Or uh, what's the what's the Jean Claude Van Damme movie with the super uh, soldier? Universal Soldier. Universal Soldier. Let me hold with on. him and him and Ivan Drago, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, but wasn't Goldberg in one of the super soldier movies? He was. He's Number three, the, three, I think. I think two. Yeah. But it's like universal page. soldiers, these are like train. Like you know, this is. Oh yeah, that's a good p photo. Hold on, pull this one up. Uh, you know, like this is this is what you expect, right? Like look, yeah, look at look at it, look at them in there. Don't look at those tomato. The thirty four percent tomato meter, forty six percent. This movie was awesome. No, this is a great movie. Right? <laughs> now, so that, so when you're thinking like you're like scanner. okay, yeah, you're like okay, super soldier, right? All I got to do is deep throat this tube swallow all the super soldier goodness and i'm gonna look like kurt russell or yeah. jean-claude van Jean damme because you're getting turned into a super Lundgren. soldier or dolph Lundgren. now i think i have a picture of of russ and uh now mind you he's out he's retired now he's right? retired. retired he's a retired super soldier now so i mean yeah 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 <laughs> There's him with the... He's let himself go just a little bit, but... You know, he can't... I mean, you can't be expected to keep up. He probably still Super lifts Soldier quite physique. a bit. Probably uh, lifts a lot. At that point, you know. Forget the triple the, uh... chin. 
and the slightly donut pear shaped physique. I think he can still rip some stuff. Uh, and it looks like he has Canva premium membership. Oh yeah, I know that exact text. You've used it on an episode. I've, yeah, I have used it on an episode. Uh, but Russ claims like he was he was doing the bidding. He was he was in the trenches. Yeah, for, he said like for the past happened. thirty years he's been part of their army and he's been fighting their opposing race, which uh, uh, Zell mentioned, mentioned earlier, the Dragos, not Ivan Dragos. Dragos, not an army of not an army of Dolph Lundgrens, but it's actually all, that's all it is, Dan, just clones, <laughs> just clones, clone of, our, clone clones arm, of Dolph Lundgren, clone army of Dolph. Dolph. We're doomed. <laughs> he's got he's got a chemical engineering degree and he's a fucking beast. So how are we supposed to beat him? Um, but uh, no, the Dragos are some type of a uh, reptilian race. Uh, uh, Russ shows. Uh, Russ is also an accomplished artist when it comes to uh, do, uh, showing Woo! depictions of his. <laughs> I didn't want to sell him short. Like I mean, <laughs> uh, he he has drawn a he's lot a of pictures. Of... He's just, yeah, yeah. Let's say that. Let's just say that. He's drawn so a lot of he pictures. Is, <laughs> he is he has drawn a lot of pictures uh, from memory of his uh, of the the alien races that he has encountered uh, during his uh, his time as yeah. an alien super soldier. And if and uh, and if his and if his memory is to believe, and if, yeah, if from he's driven from memory. And if he's if his if he's very artistically inclined, that means his memory is shit because this picture is <laughs> trash. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so those are not those, that bad. Those would be the bad. Dragos. Uh, he said that these are these were tall, scaly reptilian creatures, uh, you know, with heads uh, very, very uh, Is that a creature to, like, from HomestarRunner.com. <laughs> it might be. Uh, I, like, and so he also said that, like, he would be gone. So for, since uh, like the past 30 years, he's been in out fighting these wars. He's saying that sometimes at times he would be gone for long, what felt like long periods of times, but that's because there's some type of time dilation effect that he describes that kind of like four hours here is four years on some of these planets or when he would travel, I oh, think. Yeah. Um, well, and he, he would say, he said that he would suffer from extreme fatigue. So when he right. would return, he'd be like, yeah, I was always tired. Like, no wonder my coworkers would just be like, "You're so tired." Yeah, why well, was so I was tired at my day gone job for four years? But I'm like, yeah. wouldn't you have aged four years? Like, if I don't think he quite I'm understands how time. <laughs> the serum, <laughs> the serum is down aging. Yeah, it's regressing. In my head, his I was age, like, actually. I was like, I don't think he quite <laughs> understands how time dilation works. Four hours <laughs> here, if he leaves and he's experienced time for four years, he would age four years. Yes, it would. So every, when he came back, everyone would be like, "Do you just age? You look Damn, old man. and grizzled." <laughs> And so, yeah, and, and Russ says he's that. So he he is fight. He has fought battles, uh, according to him. He has fought battles in the UK, uh, Europe, South America, and then also in different territories in space, fighting different, not just the Dragos, but also other uh, races of aliens. So he says there's like there's a number, a multitude of races, different races, a lot of competition, in different conflicts uh, at times. And he said he's fought in underground bases and undersea bases here on earth uh and he has fought in some of these things um you know kind of i, I think he described one of them as kind of being like some sort of special ops uh type of deal where they were going in and and kind of like either like us like straight up assassinations of some sort like vip <laughs> elimination <laughs> just, missions just dr some drago drago politicians yeah uh, i think that's the so, script to fast 10 <laughs> um so he he says that every but every time that he's been abducted he says that he's pulled into uh like a type of like a checkered room that he just uh similar to like a chessboard it's so like white and white white and black checkered space um that he's pulled into and that in the center of this room there would be a glass ball uh that he said that would be able to transport you through time and space um and take you anywhere in the known universe, I guess, to to accomplish his his mission. Um, and he was saying that, like, you know, when when he's pulled on board and he is, you know, to the super soldier treatment, like he's also that what they would do is they would. He Give said there was more body than, and... and he wasn't the only one. Like he was, he said there were like hundreds, like hundreds, like an entire like barracks full of other humans uh, pulled on board during these training sessions, and they would have like. 
either like they have like little like kind of tactical overlay visors plus like a giant like hologram arena that would that would that would display like various battle tactics and strategies that were kind of like just like i guess like osmosis into their brains like uh i guess like conditioned into their brains about how to uh perpetrate like a war <laughs> like war an crimes. intergalactic <laughs> war uh yeah war crimes intergalactic war crimes um and so yeah it, 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 so that that is one of the things and he said like in order to you know combat the dragos apparently the dragos are only vulnerable to sonics based weapon weaponry uh he said that they were they were um, sound only they were issued well they were issued these rifles like they were issued these rifles or, or uh machine rifles of some type or whatever that he said that they had magazines much like our like like an automatic rifle here on earth but it was more like a battery pack and he said they would put the battery pack on and that this this these guns like shot they they operate on some type of sound principle and that they would implode the aliens so then they would shoot them and that was the only put that was the only way that to defeat dope. the dragos um to do damage to them is some type of the sonic based weaponry and then eventually they got upgraded. I guess, you know, he found the secret cache that upgraded it to have an underslung laser cannon on the bottom, which would help them oh, destroy yeah. artillery pieces of some sort. He just said artillery, not wasn't really specific about what type of artillery. But um yeah, so uh that that's the kind of gear that you're issued when you are on the uh the intergalactic Dracula payroll, I guess. Um, well and and if you're and to be honest, if you're if you're listening to this and you're like, you know, why this guy? Couldn't it have been me? Well, you got to ask yourself, are you really tired? Do you find yourself tired at different tired? parts of the day? Yeah. Are you at work and you eat your lunch? And then after you're like, God damn, I could have a nap. You might be an intergalactic super soldier because it's not just Russ Kellett. Russ Kellett has seen tons of other. He, he's. You know he's he's obviously breaching NDAs by coming out and saying this, but he's revealed identities of other super soldiers. He has, he right. has. Such uh, as uh, real names. Yeah, such as uh, hit singer of uh, Blurred Lines, Robbie Williams. Just up there. <laughs> that's, 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 it's a Robbie Williams. Isn't it Robbie Williams? <laughs> That does blurred lines? No. Yeah, doesn't he sing that? What does he Isn't sing? That Tim Timbaland and someone? That's no. blurred lines is the other guy. Uh... Robbie Williams. <laughs> oh, Pharrell. Pharrell and Robbie Williams. Robin Thick. Robin Thick is. Robin Thick. All right. Well, you don't know he's not a super soldier. <laughs> Robin Thick is not. I don't know. Robbie is, Williams is, is UK UK pop singer star. What does he sing? Robbie Williams. I'm not really familiar with this catalog. I had to look him up. <laughs> uh, yeah, Angels. One of the first times that, well, according to Russ Kellett, one of the first times that he was abducted, he saw British singer songwriter Robbie Williams uh, aboard the ship. So he's also in the Super Soldier program. Um, Robbie Williams has not confirmed this uh, from any of my knowledge or any of the stuff that I've seen. That he cannot uh, confirm nor deny. <laughs> but could it be possible? Could it be possible if this is to be believed? Right? And this guy is a, a fucking kill machine. Don't fuck with him. Uh, and he is you know he's maybe he, something's he, maybe he's special and when everyone else gets their minds wiped it just like didn't it didn't work on him didn't stick he didn't stick he's too super he guzzled back too much of the super serum <laughs> just open up his throat and let it flow yeah. just kind of yeah yeah all the all the all the aliens they call him the throat goat for how much he takes yeah. Yeah, that's right. a, that's a uh, that <laughs> he said all types that of term. Records. That term is intergalactic. Everybody knows what that yeah. is. And he, he's <laughs> uh, he, goat. Yeah. And he's and that's he's like he's known. He's like, oh my god, the throat goat's on the battlefield. He's got more super serum <laughs> than anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That guy could guzzle <laughs> down that super serum like yeah. nobody's business. Yeah, fucking every three times a mu- three like, times as much as your average. Sometimes man. he'll take yeah. he'll take two three tubes at a time, man. Yeah. 
There is no limit to how much serum he can yeah. take. The cower and Most fear. Most people are choking and spitting it up. <laughs> Not Russ Kelly. Not Russ. Spitting Not it up. Russ. Running Not and spitting. Old. Russ throat code Kelly. <laughs> I just nothing be mad nothing this. faces him. Oh, fuck. Uh, Why? We're saying this adds up true. if he's guzzled back more super, super serum. serum. I, just, I mean, yeah, I right. guess I could check out. There's a linear it, line of how much super serum you can ingest <laughs> and how strong you become. Yeah. It never, I, I it never fades yeah. out. It just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Your> protein. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Now, um, I don't think that's ever been. Said. I've never heard throat goat before. That's, I've heard that's, it before. I never. Heard it. That's when people when people talk about Nancy Reagan. <laughs> they call Nancy Reagan. Some, throat it's like American goat. political joke. I don't really get yeah. it, but I know the name Reagan. Yeah, Nancy no, Reagan. And apparently, story. she was uh, she was the throat goat. Name. Sounds like that, that's that's a, you can look it up. It's a history. It's no, like I a, believe I believe you. I just uh, I never I don't fucking a lot of, well. I don't know if it's actually been confirmed but there, there's so just, a lot of people just, who are like yeah just google oh, yeah. nancy reagan who throat goat on my work computer nancy <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Reagan yeah. Throat I'll do it tomorrow. Goat. yeah why are people tweeting that nancy reagan was the throat goat <laughs> there's like there's a lot there was a lot of, like it was going around at one time and it was just like <laughs> i thought it was like oh she was a uh, very oh, popular fuck. No, I mean, she can't if you look at her now, knows. I mean, I don't know. She's Everyone like 80 years old. Russ she doesn't Gellert. look that bad. <laughs> Russ Gellert is the throat get out there saving us from inner yeah. from interstellar. They're gonna have to have a competition. No, There's only one way to settle it. <laughs> is, is, is she still alive? This girl? A super no, serum guzzle Nancy off? Reagan? Yeah, I don't, I don't think Nancy Reagan's still alive. I, don't I have no she... idea. I think so. I mean, Ron Reagan's dead. <laughs> Been for a while. Uh, uh, the um, so yeah, the, the list of people, the list of people who have uh, combated with with aliens is is kind of short. Um, like we said already, uh, and so you have like Russ Kellett out there, but you also have this one uh, controversial figure uh, uh, named Jonathan Reed. Russ so, Kellett was non controversial. Was non controversial. Is non controversial. Non controversial. Yeah. He's the um, throat goat. So. I mean, there's, only there, a there's no doubt. Da- there's no doubt about the validity of his claims. <laughs> Everyone uh, else, though, but <laughs> Jonathan Careful. Reed. So Jonathan Reed. So we have to rewind a little bit. Jonathan Reed in October of 1996, he claimed that he had an encounter while hiking in the C- Cascade Mountains uh, near Seattle, Washington. Oh, so far from us. T- no, from, we yeah, could go. Right? We could Just do a hop that. and we skip could go for a hike there. <laughs> you could you can consider us the Cascadia region, actually, the northern yeah. tip. So uh, now, according to Reed, uh, he, he was hiking with his dog at the time, and they stumbled onto what appeared to be like a blue beam of light that kind of came out of the forest, and then his dog just disappeared, vaporized, like gone. Um, and then shortly after that, because I mean, you know. Reed is at that point, understandably, probably shocked uh, and terrorized or terrified. Like, what happened to my dog? What is happening? Uh, he remembers that that shortly after that, he saw this strange non-human entity emerge out of um, the woods, and he described this alien as being uh, a four foot tall, grayish skin, large black eyes, and the elongated limbs. Listen, so you're very archetypal. Listen, you're archetypal I'm gray. Tell- I'm telling you right now. If I'm in the woods on any kind of hike and an extraterrestrial comes out of the woods and is looking at me, if I'm not frozen within the first five seconds, I'm either <laughs> hightailing it the other way or I'm going, he's got no technology, it's on. Like, it's it's fight or flight here. Like, you, you got no, you, there's only two options there. Like, you're like, my first thought would be like, oh, I'm fucked, he's going to zap me. And then a second I wasn't zapped, it's go time. Uh, Catch it. So, <laughs> so, so Reed said that um, he, it's either he snuck up on this, this creature, um, you may manage to catch it unawares um, or that, you know, he was defending himself from this creature that was trying to uh, 
uh, assault him uh, or something like that. And he said that he... His story doesn't add up. If he snuck up on it, it doesn't sound like it was assaulting. Yeah, I had to sneak up on it to prevent assault on myself um but he says that he managed to defend himself uh from the creature by using a large tree branch and then rendering it unconscious with this you know by attacking it with the large tree branch so just like you know baseball swinging it yeah Yeah. baseball swinging in his big uh, big gray dome and putting it down uh now reed uh, probably realizing that you know something you know he had something here you know whether it's unconscious or he probably wasn't even sure at that point i'm I'm not even sure how you would tell if an alien was unconscious or dead uh, at this point whether you know if, well, even if I they mean, breathe like we keep, do keep poking them until they move yeah right. <laughs> well, I, don't I, f- th- I feel like i feel like you could you would have a good idea like you know and if you were clubbing something in the head and then you'd be like you know, you what do the they don't one, breathe? two, three what's, of its what, limp what arm. Yeah, that's natural. what I'm saying. Like, if they don't breathe like we do, like, what if it breathes through its skin? Like, you wouldn't be able to tell, like, if it's breathing or yeah. whatever. But, yeah, it just, you know, know. oxygen but, or whatever type of gas just passes through them and they absorb it. They don't right. do anything. But Reed, Reed judged that it was incapacitated as, as some type, whether it was us. dead or whether it was alive. He was, you know, but he he judged that, you know, the best course of action was to wrap the alien's body in a sheet and then mm-hmm. take it back to his house and put it in a freezer. You know, the old try Rick Dyer, the Rick Dyer approach, you know, of course. Um, so now there is a there is a YouTube video. Um, that was circulating at the time that Reed said that he he put out that he took this video uh, documenting uh, the actual uh, encounter uh, with this alien. So they, he said like he took photographs and videos um, in order to show the public of this alien. So there is a YouTube video of him actually like uh, kind of examining the alien while it's like he's got it in the sheet, like he's got it and he's kind of like I like. I mean, you can Google it. You can Google Jonathan Reed YouTube alien video. And it is like, it is him like kind of turning it and whatever. And it, it looks very much like, like one of the aliens from like, Mm -hmm. uh, like a very typical alien, like movie alien, like one of the, uh, uh, it's probably like one of the the ball sack aliens from fucking fire in the sky. Like one of those ones (laughs) that looks like one of those. Uh, But he is moving it around and he's saying like, yeah, this is, this is it. This is the alien that I caught that, you know, um, that whatever. Uh, But it is, it's like a couple minutes long of him just kind of, he has it inside. Like what looks like like one of those space blankets, one of those like foil blankets, Um, the emergency blanket. And he's got wrapped inside there and he's kind of moving it around and, you know, it's showing it and showing it off. And then, uh, so um, he claimed that this this alien, like after this, like you know, giving it the cursory examination, that it revived, it actually revived at some point, <laughs> but then, but then disintegrated into glowing crystalline substance afterwards. Like so, it died. I guess it self destructed, and it just yeah. poof, like just like it's, I guess like this disintegrated. Now this this. When did this in ninety six? This is ninety six. Fuck man. I okay, this case for some reason I thought it was the same one, but it's hundred percent not. There's definitely another case strikingly similar to this. Um I bet I can find it. It's uh I remember it it might even be pre podcast that I heard about this. <laughs> and it's uh like old. And there was like a Chinese like a Chinese guy and he Oh yeah 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 I know what like, you're talking he about. He said he fought he fought an alien yeah. and yeah. like he squared up with it in his house, dusted it, this thing tried to take off, hit his electric fence, died. Right. Once it touched the electric fence. Tried to leap it. One. He tried to put its hand yeah. on, leap over the electric ah, dead. He drags it back to his freezer puts it in and he starts call, like calling hey yo i got this alien i got this alien the chinese government was just like they just came in they were like you're fake and you're in jail now <laughs> and i remember there's like pictures in the pictures he like had to admit like he came out and admit it was like fucking i can't remember what he made it hold on let me see if i can find it alien farmer yeah i know what you're talking about the one that like made it out of 
something yes. weird. Yes, I found it. I found it. I found it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. Because I think I looked. I actually looked this one up. I think for a po- like one of our podcast things, I never used it. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's what he that's said. The one. And look at what's with this right there. Yeah, what's, what's that? that? <laughs> that's the old gleam. Like, between the legs, there's some type of. Hold on. I know they do. Look at those eyes. Mm. Woo. They look like the, the, eyeball, uh, the eyeball aliens eyeballs from Rick there. and Morty. You have tw- eight eye holes. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah look at that. Yeah. Like, what is that's going on in the crotch region there? That's some, I don't know that's what that some, is. So, you know the what? Jonathan Reed one looks I, better. I have than a sneaking suspicion. Yeah, yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion that prior to this thing being an alien, it may have been a sex toy. <laughs> some type of yeah blow up doll of some kind look, look there's a zoom in of the yeah of i the mean mm-hmm. what else can you say that looks like great a weird uh, very weird vajayj yeah that's what it looks like it's like someone was making their best attempt and then they're like oh this thing doesn't didn't turn out yeah. what can i do with this that's an alien now look what i found <laughs> Farmer arresting after. So you know what happened. You know what happened. His, his wife, his wife caught him with it, <laughs> and she's like, "What is this?" And she's, he's like, "Ah, oh, you'll never believe." And she's like, "Well, you better start talking." <laughs> See, he ended up having to go to jail because he had to lie, lie till he died. He's like, "I'll, I'll yeah. go take, yeah, this take it right grave. to the grave." Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. Rather go to jail than live in the house with. <laughs> My wife is gonna be fucking staring. It might kill me. <laughs> yeah, I'm safer remember, in jail. Take take me away, officers. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember exactly how much time he had, but I, I bet a substantial amount. This is China. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, those are mostly interesting cases that you have of, of people actually getting in violent physical altercations, uh, close with, range with fights. Aliens. Yeah, close quarters combat with uh, not shooting guns, no, getting right down dirty with the aliens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we got a couple more good ones on our Patreon. If you head to patreon.com slash alien theorists, we do dot com or the support tab on our website, you can go to supercast, whoever you want to support us. We got a couple more, of us, and one of those is uh, Skinwalker, Skinwalker, no, Stardust, Stardust Ranch. Stardust, Stardust Ranch. Ranch. Yeah, we I get still, into it with this. Yeah, there's probably, there's probably an update out there. I wonder if they're. They were trying now to sell the ranch last time, and I don't know if oh, they actually managed to sell buddy, it. Buddy, why we should we should buy the ranch and we can make a show called Stardust Ranch, and it it airs Secrets right after ranch. Secrets yeah. of Stardust Ranch, and it airs right after Skinwalker Ranch. The mm. only difference is instead of going and collecting data, it's just us in tack gear, yeah. not samurai swords, training, training. just like blade Trying outfits with like yeah, yeah. yeah. straight, yeah, yeah. straight. Yeah. Yeah. Blade yeah. dusters, dusters, yeah. and bulletproof vests. Our, like our head of security's name is Blade, and he looks yeah. exactly like Blade. It might be he Wesley is, Snipes. He might yeah. actually be. I think Wesley Snipes would do it. <laughs> at this point, he might do our movie. Yeah, I think we. I think no movie, TV show. I think we could afford him too at this point. Yeah. And so yeah. Here's head of security, Blade. <laughs> I think we can sign him to ten seasons right off the bat. He's dressed in his full outfit. We could probably say, "Hey, Wesley, you can come out. You can do whatever you want. You can make up your own lines. We don't care. You like, can that's say fine. whatever yeah. you want." He'd be like, no, yeah. we should say we 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 tell him be like, it's in your contract that eighty percent of your lines are written by you. Yeah, just so you know. Yeah, because <laughs> then it puts the onus on him, right? And then you do what he wants. Yeah. yeah, that show would sell instantly. Yeah, totally. Okay, where what's what's his what's Buddy's name? Which one? Our, the producer the we needed wanted us to pitch a oh, show. Oh, John. Uh, producer John. John, pitch up. Never, John, never we got texted it. us back. John, we got we it. We finally Secrets. got the idea, John. Get Wesley we Snipes on the phone right now. We need Wesley Funny. Snipes. Dude. All we need. He's yeah. the last part. He's the last yeah. piece of the puzzle, John. That's it. Yeah. We got it. Secrets of Stardust Ranch with us and head of security, Blade. <laughs> A.K.A. Wesley Snipes. <laughs> no, not Perfect. that Wesley Snipes. Oh, no. Not, it's we just Blade, never yeah. say, even in the credits, it would say security, Blade himself. Yeah. yeah. Right. Playing himself, Blade. Yeah. Well, Wesley Snipes Even probably has some... Uh, get some... along. <laughs> yeah, it would, be a, it would be a short season. I could hide. Oh, it's so funny. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah we couldn't use Wesley Snipes because... Uh, 
the name Wesley Snipes because he probably owes the government still a lot of money. I think. Right? I think so. So you have to you have to play an alternate character. We have to pay him through crypto. There's no we have to have no yeah, paper right. Right, paper trail. Dude, it's, it's dude. Taxes are no shit, man. And you know what's funny about taxes? Some motherfuckers always he's trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> ice skate uphill. <laughs> There's only a few things in in the world that you actually just have to do, and that's one of them. Unfortunately. Yeah. Especially when you make a lot of money. Yeah. I don't um, need to pay taxes. I make millions of dollars. I don't need to pay taxes. Mostly, <laughs> you need to pay your taxes. It's not how it works. Not quite how it works. You actually owe us um, $9 yeah. million. Dollars. But you know what you don't have to pay a million dollars for? Our Patreon. Our Patreon. Yeah. Get on it. The closer f- hey, the- Patreon has not gone up with inflation. Patreon is the same price it has always been. See? Yeah. Great value. Never goes and up with inflation. We're like Costco inflation. hot dogs, man. Yeah. We will not going to budge on that $1 <laughs> hot dog. Yeah. No, I, I take I it back. We, we made Zelda budge. Wait, wait, what he it? said he'd slit my throat. Just like the Costco CEO. I'll kill you if we raise the Patreon. And you support uh, us on Patreon, you get early access, ad free, all the bonus stuff we do, everything. Access to our done. super nice Discord. The Discord. The early access of the streams. All that good shit. We really appreciate it. This week's newest supporters, we have Drew the Defiler. Ooh, I think it's, hmm, good name. Good name. Nick Core. Hemdaws. Gage Olson, Olson, Yash Chandel, and another year pledged by the only theory of the year, Burmeister. Woo. Thank you very much for supporting the show. Oh, wait. And before we go, before we oh. go, shit. Oh, there, you shit. might have already heard an ad for this. Probably not. Um, probably not. But <laughs> if you, if, yeah, you might, you might be just about hearing it. Um, ATT live coming at you um, Space news time Old cosmic channels time uh, First one's going to be May 28th 6.30pm Pacific Standard Time uh, We're going to announce uh, The next couple uh, Come join us live, come grab a beer uh, Free for all on YouTube uh, Look up Alien Theory Theorizing Big Theory Productions uh, Like, subscribe uh, Get those notifications, come join us We're going to be uh, Shooting the shit talking aliens we got segments uh it's gonna be fun call, we, uh, we got the line lines open lines gonna be lines open. open quite amas chats open you know yeah chats open uh it's gonna be a good time so hopefully we see Raiden's there open Braden's completely open yep. okay. open to so, super wow. soldier serum yeah. watch Braden take his watch Braden <laughs> guzzle as much super soldier serum hey listen <laughs> No one would guzzle more secret serum, secret serum than me, out of us three. <laughs> you're probably not. You're probably yeah. not wrong. I'm not right. I already look like I'm on it. <laughs> I'm already. Right. Is he right? Did you or see? Did you see? What's his name? Russ. We are like twins. Oh, Kurt Russell? No, Kurt no, Russell. no. Russ. Russ Kellett? Kellett. Oh, Russ Kellett. I was like, Kurt Russell? No. <laughs> you Kurt Russell. Absolutely. I'm not. like, you're being very yeah. generous. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking about Hollywood's depiction of a super soldier. I'm talking about actual intergalactic Oh, the super real. Soldiers. Yeah, the, yeah. This is not, Anyways, this is not, <laughs> this is not what you think peak performance looks like, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. The body of peak uh, performance. As we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace. Peace. See you in after hours.
This is where the magic uh, happens, baby. Yeah, no Andrew this week. He's in fucking no Disneyland. Andrew. We didn't even 